Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I'm on the go, um, but I'm just gonna um, park and sit here for a minute because I got some some work to do. Um, I have a few um, orders and projects that I have to I have some deadlines on, but um, I want to address some things that's been said. Um, <laughs> and um, this is V Michelle. Let's talk about it. Every Friday at seven o'clock, I'm here, um, and I invite you to join me. Um, and um, I'm gonna wait for some more people to join. Um, Cause tonight is is real serious. Let's see if I can. Um, basically. Get my buddy Rob on here, and um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's see if he's on here. I don't see him, but he will. There he is, Robert Lee. See if Robert Lee can join us. So, um, I want to talk tonight about the truth. Um, <laughs> it's funny to me um, how it's really just so tough for us to accept truth. I mean, even, you know, it's a human nature. It's a human nature effect. It's something that, you know, we all go through. Um some of us, we live, we learn, we grow. Some of us, we just keep on struggling with accepting truth. So I want to talk tonight. Um, let me just make sure I'm secure. A little bit about truth. Um, so um, I'm in this particular group. And um, there may be people from the group that may join me on this live, but I'm really waiting on my buddy Robert Lee because I really want to hear from um, a grown man's sp uh, perspective, somebody who I consider to be a king, somebody I consider to be a teacher, um, a sharer, um, someone who walks in wisdom and knowledge um, concerning um, truth and relationships. So, um, until he gets here, I just want you all to, you know, chime in. You can say, speak your mind, say whatever you'd like. Um, so, I'm in this group, and um, there's always some drama. There's always something going on in the group. And, you know, for those who don't know, um, I was married, um, my second marriage, um, the guy almost killed me. I married him too soon. Okay. That um, incident happened February 2019. I escaped. Thank God with my life. Um, took almost two years now um, to heal. Um, divorce was final August 10th of this year. I'm glad about it. Um, anytime you marry the wrong type of person, um, you marry for the wrong reasons, um, you you marry somebody, but you override the truth. See, that was my problem. And so I overrode the truth. I knew this person was not uh, marriage material. I knew that this person, um, he just was not ready for marriage. He, um, I knew that this person was somebody that would be difficult for me to, um, to be in a relationship with and proof in the pudding his his track record it's difficult for all women that he's been with um to be in a relationship with him but you know the person that i was and i say was because again right you know you have to live experience some things and learn so i lived I learned, um, but how I used to be is that I would be with a man, stay with a man based on his potential, okay? There's a real problem with a person's 
potential being something that you focus on. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, a person with good character and, you know, um, pretty much a stable um, lifestyle, you know, they have things together, they have their life in order, um, they have their own home, they have their own car, they got a job, you know what I'm saying, they got a couple of dollars in the bank, they are independent, I'm not saying that it's anything wrong with looking at a person that's have some uh, that's currently walking in success and walking in vision, and then you seeing greater potential or where they can be based on what they're already doing okay there's nothing wrong with that the problem comes in is when we look at a person's potential and they ain't doing nothing they ain't doing none of that what you're looking at they can have potential to do well she has a potential to get a job but she don't even get up in the morning to try to look for work she doesn't even have a resume matter of fact she don't even have a high school diploma she don't know how to um, conduct herself she don't know how to read write I mean okay for a man okay well he he's got a potential to get a job but he is not even mastered having community and connections with the right people because he's got a criminal background or he's got a problem with his license or he's got something else going on but he's not even working on those things getting in order so that he can live up to quote unquote his potential so I just keep it real you know I don't mean no harm but then again I do because too many of us too many of us are living beneath our privileges. Too many of us are attaching ourselves and, and allowing ourselves to be um, attached, um, tied to a person that has nothing but potential. And the potential is not real. Potential is nothing. If a person don't have no fruit, no type of productivity towards that potential why why am i going to get with you and you don't have nothing that you're producing towards the potential that i'm supposed to believe in you for okay so let's go ahead and dig in it because I had some little negative comments come out towards me. And I mean, you know, it don't bother me. You know, it's a world of free speech. But I do like for us to, to as grown folk, put things in perspective. So let me put this disclaimer out there. Yes, I've been married. Yes, I'm divorced. Um, and currently my relationship status really ain't nobody's business. But just know that I'm happy healthy and I'm happy so in the so the story was and you can respond please comment and talk back to me on tonight because why this is let's talk about it Friday nights at 7 and we're gonna keep it real so we can heal too many of us are getting damaged wasting time and with people that we not even compatible with that we can't have no future with it no matter how much we try so anyway the story goes um, there's a guy um, and a girl they've been living together for a couple of years two years and they are living together okay living together for two years dating I don't even know how quickly they moved in together, but all I know is two years, and I believe the relationship is two years, so when they decided to move in together, I have no idea, but they've been in a relationship for two years, and um, they, they've moved since, moved in together, and so this particular day, um, the girl is at a baby, sh uh, a baby shower for a co-worker. She's the hostess. She planned it. She has to be there to execute it and everything. It could have been her business. Um, didn't get any much information on that other than she's at this shower for the co-worker. She's running things. The guy is home. He's sad. He's upset and understandably so because his good friend from, from growing, from school, you know, growing up together has been put on life support. 
I can't remember if it was because of an accident or what it was, but he was put on life support and um, he um, th th he got word that they were thinking of taking him off life support on this particular day. So, um, you know, he's texting the girlfriend. This was his wife. He texting his girl and you know letting her know and she's responding i mean even though she's busy doing what she needs to do but she's taking out time and responding and saying you know i'm so sorry babe I, i'm you know that about your friend you know we're going to get through this you're going to make it through this we just need to hope for the best let's just keep praying sort of thing so at some point he's like you know what are you doing um i need you can you come home her response and i'm gonna i'm not i'm not doing this verbatim i'm just paraphrasing the story her response was you know i can't leave just now but i will as soon as possible It'll only take me a couple of hours to do this um so i mean you know it might have been two hours she set because maybe the baby shower hadn't started yet and you know you go to a baby shower it's gonna take a couple of hours at least for people to come in do the party eat play the games and open the gifts and go home so it takes some time right so um when she responded that way the guy said oh don't worry about it you can't come home for me don't worry about it that's all right um because i'm gonna get somebody else to come and be here for me number one that's a hot red flag because a person that does that um you know can have some things going but number one they are uh, controlling and manipulating and that's never a good thing in tough times that's never a good thing period but when we try to control and manipulate folks into doing what we want them to do because there's no book or manual that says a person has to do jack let's get that right and when you when you married because <laughs> i was married before for 50 over 15 years okay so when you marry there's some things your mate is not going to always do right or do how you think they should do it's a live and learn situation but that's what the courting part is all about see we date to get in the bed now that's what people are doing dating to get in the bed instead of dating to get to know getting data see you're supposed to be dating to get to know a person to know how they will respond you know what their character is their temperament you know what their beliefs are you know who they are before you even jump into bed i mean you know and i ain't down on people for jumping into bed but you know what i what i got a problem with is okay you jumping into bed and then when you're dissatisfied now your lip poked out now you want to be upset and blame the person that you decided to jump in bed with for doing something wrong okay so we got to put some things in perspective Okay, we got to put some things in perspective and um, let me make sure my charger is on. We got to put some things in perspective and we've got to keep it real. Okay, we got to know the truth and let the truth set us free. Okay, so the guy, he was so upset. He went on to say, and this is a story that was put before me. I, I ain't make up the story. I ain't a part of the story. Uh, But, you know, I had my two cents to say about it. And I want to hear what you got to say. So his response was, don't worry about it. I get somebody else to be here for me. And as a matter of fact, your stuff is going to be out on the lawn when you come home whoa that's abuse i mean so you doing all that that's your response and so you think out of you making threats you know ultimatums you know talking about you're gonna get another woman or you know and somebody else to be there for you to, to replace the person that now you decided to move in with you said you love you said you want to be with so you're supposed to know everything about this person right and so 
Number one, throwing somebody's stuff out and threatening to put it out in the elements so it could get messed up and destroyed, that's illegal. You know, watch um divorce court, watch Judge Mathis, watch any of these court stories. You can't just put somebody's stuff out and then don't think that you there ain't no legal repercussions because guess what? You could be sued for that and have to pay every dime, whatever they can prove they paid for that would have been a part of what you threw out and, and, and got damaged or destroyed, you will be paying for it. So that's another thing. So, but before he said, well, after that, she was like, wow, you know, why are you doing all that? I'm in this situation where, you know, I can't leave right now, but I will come straight home as soon as possible. Just let me finish what I committed to and I'll be there, you know? So he's like, um, yeah, but when your grandmother died, uh, 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 ba 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 wait hold up wait a minute wrong right there so this person now he's looking like a narcissist because what does my the death of my grandmother have to do with the price of tea in china concerning today your school friend is on life support what, what does one have to do with the other and see and that's where you know being tit for tat and you know because i did this you need to do that people got a problem with their heart i mean listen i'm living my best life i'm not getting ready to go back and forth i'm not getting ready to you know if i truly love you even when i don't understand you I'm still going to walk in peace and in agreement with you. We can talk and we can agree to disagree. But what we're not going to do is try to control, manipulate, and threaten one another. That is a sign that somebody is not healthy. They're in a relationship for the wrong reason. You're not in no relationship to control me. You know, I'm not in no relationship to control you. We can't control that person. They're still an adult. They still have their own mind. I mean, yeah, we can come to an understanding, but there's going to be probably many times we still not going to understand or agree. Only thing we can agree on is that, look, boo, I love you. And look, us being together and us, you know, loving one another and walking in peace and agreement is more important than this thing here. Um... You know, and we can, you know, go to counseling and classes and just try to understand where the mindset is coming from. But one thing, but all of this needs to take place before you move in, before you get married. I've, I've been at fault with that. Jumping right in, I don't know Jack, don't know enough or nothing. So the girl said, well, I'm going to come on home and get my stuff since you, my stuff costs a lot of money. And he said, so when I needed you, you couldn't come. But because of your stuff, you can come. Okay. So people start chiming in the chat and saying, oh, she wrong. She did him dirty. She cold. This and that. Well, my uncle always taught me. I had an uncle. He's a bishop. And he he always says some wise stuff. And I have tried his stuff. And it's turning out the work for me. He always says, believe none of what you see, half of what you hear, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. So, it's like, we don't know the full story. We don't know if this person is a narcissist, controlling type of person, and he does this all the time. We don't know if he's like emotional and just likes to make a big deal out of things. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what the situation is. It's so many different scenarios could be going to plan in this situation. They could be like, you know, on the verge of breaking up, but trying to be cordial, cordial because they got this place together and she ain't interested in giving him, him anything more than what she's willing. So we just don't know. 
So anyway, some people pulled up my page and they were like, you know, she ain't got no man, which you don't know what I got. Okay. I'm just letting you know, you don't know what I got. Okay. But just know I'm happy. All right. I'm at peace. I'm happy. All right. So then people screenshotted my page and it's like, she's divorced. So, okay. If that's related to the couple in the story, they not even married. They moved in. What you got when you move in? Let's talk about that. Really, what do you have when you move in with somebody? I'm waiting. Not Jack. And what do you have when you walk down the aisle and say, I do? Hello? A piece of paper that says you been in holy matrimony. You in matrimony, but are you in a marriage? See, marriage ain't on the paper, honey. Marriage ain't walking down the aisle, honey. Marriage is the work that you do before you get in it. Okay? Relationship is what the work that you do and the information you find out before you move in, before you together. What I'm moving in for and, you know, you don't like to be there for me. Who fault is that? I'm the one moved in with you. That's all I was saying. He moved in with the girl. She ain't just being that way just today. I mean, she, he knew this girl was like this. So either the man, he, the dude crazy, controlling, manipulative, you know, or he's, you know, with a cold-hearted person. And, you know, so what he going to do? You gonna get mad? You mad? You mad? Okay, and you being mad, what's that gonna do? Not Jack. Okay, I'm just keeping it real. Okay, we've got to be realistic with these this dating, and, and I ain't even fully dating. Like, you know, a lot of I have not dated a lot of people. I'm just you know starting out, and I you know met somebody, and I'm you know happy with it right now. But yeah, I'm like. What is, why are you getting mad to the point where you're threatening to get another woman? you threatening to throw the girl's clothes out. For what? What that going to do? So, I don't know. We just need to know the truth and we need to start reevaluating ourselves. We've got to start taking some responsibility ourselves. I am, I'm full, I want to be full of responsibility right now. In my life, I want to be full of responsibility for, uh, fully responsible for any man that I choose to want to connect with. Because everybody you want to connect with ain't no connection. Because connections, they bless your life. They build you up. They, they add a value they add even more value but when you get attached and when you get tied to the wrong person an ungodly person a person don't even believe like you believe a person don't even walk how you walk don't talk how you talk don't live how you live don't like what you like listen it's more to it moving in and banging like so you got what you got and as a king and as a queen I encourage all of us, even myself, when a situation don't work, you ain't got to talk and go back and forth. Gracefully bow out, change your locks, change your number, block them, whatever you got to do. You ain't got to talk about it. It's not working. It was nice meeting you. Thank you for everything. I hope you find what you're looking for. That's it. There ain't no need for no second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth conversation. That's a wrap. That's it. You know, all this coming back and forth and all this and whew. But I'm just like, why you wanna pick on me? Why you wanna pick on me? Why y'all mad at me? Cause why? Cause I didn't say the girl was wrong. Cause she was insensitive and she, you know, come home and tend to him. She ain't got to do nothing. 
That's not her husband. The spirit and the anointing not even on her. Not on neither one of them. You can't make somebody do. That's my point. You cannot make somebody be who you want them to be, who you need them to be. So I, I advise and I encourage and I reference you to, you know, make sure before you tie yourself sexually to somebody. Yeah, because that's what you're doing, tying in, tying your soul, tying your heart, tying your feelings, tying your mind, tying your money, tying your time up in this person. Before you tie yourself into somebody, you better research and you better research. You better you better research. You better validate, validate, but verify. Come on, somebody. Because there's so many people, you know, they, they posing a fraud. They, they acting, you know, they, they, they put up a real good front. Oh, my gosh. They put up a real good front. And I'm sorry. I don't believe nothing till I verify it. I might not tell you, but the new me, I'm verifying everything. Okay, because I ain't got no more time to waste on somebody. Okay, you're a good person, but you're not good for me. I'm a good person, but I'm not good for you. And what's wrong with that? It's okay. We can know that, be free, and just be at peace about it. I mean, why be mad? Why be mad? Okay? So... That's how I come at it. I'm consistent. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm standing firmly on my core beliefs, you know, on what's been built up in me. I have taken almost two years to heal. I've taken the time to um, become self-aware, to walk in self-awareness for myself. I take full responsibility, full responsibility. I don't blame even my ex for what happened. He almost took my life. I, I blame him for that part, of course. But as far as me, can, you know, attaching myself and allowing this person in my life and going all the way to the altar, that was all me. Nobody put a gun to my head. Nope. Just like in that story, nobody put a gun to the guy's head to move in with the chick. I mean, what you living with somebody that don't care nothing about you for? No way. What you mad at them for? You the one living with them. You the one in bed with them, sleeping with the enemy. And why you mad? You mad. <laughs> We've got to do better. Truth is so important. You have got to know the truth and let it set you free, baby. It's got to set you free. I'm just talking real right now. I ain't preached. I ain't gave you no bunch of scriptures or nothing like that. But there is a scripture that said, how can two walk together except they agree? It's ungodly for me even to be talking, always talking about me and my needs, not considering you. And even in a situation where I need you, now I'm going to threaten you. You're not ready for no healthy, wholesome, longevity in no relationship. Unless you're going to end up with Alzheimer's, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. Yeah, stress and all this kind of thing. It does a lot to the body. I didn't had enough of that in my life. I'm not doing it. I was talking to somebody the other day and... um. You know, I, I never, I, I never, you know, did, would answer the guy's call and I would just be busy or whatever. And then I was like, I'm going to go ahead and talk to the person. Let me just see what they're talking about. Let me just give them this chance to at least talk, say I did that, you know, because you don't know unless you, you know, you, you don't know unless you find out. So talking to the guy and all he's talking about is, you know, how I look, you know, um, how sexually satisfying, you know, he could be and, how he would want to kiss me and all these things and how he got a high sex drive and he's just going on and on and on and I'm just like and I'm like do you think that impresses somebody when they try to get to know you so he went as far as to say well 
because you know it i know me and you not gonna work out because you know if we spend time together then i know i'm gonna want to touch and feel and with the touching and feeling one thing is gonna lead to another and you're not gonna want to why are we going to be touching and feeling and one thing leading to another? And we don't, I don't even know your government name good. I don't know what school, if you got a driver's license. And, and then get this, we wasn't going nowhere because first of all, I have a home. I have a car. I have a job. Okay. So... What you're not going to do is come in my house and you talking about you got a roommate, you don't have no car, you know, you work for your uncle, craziness. I'm like, no, we're not getting ready to do that. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in this and I've always been. That's just, just me. Okay. If you look, read the story of Adam, go back to Genesis, read about how God created the heavens and earth. He created male and female. He created man, Adam, and he gave Adam Eve. Before Eve was given and Adam found her, right? When she came on the scene, wasn't everything already prepared? Wasn't Adam already working? He already had his stuff together. God had blessed him tremendously. He didn't want for nothing. He was great financially. He didn't need nothing. All he was missing was a woman. Where are the men that the only thing that's missing, like you got your, you got together on the home front. You paying all your bills on time. You not living from paycheck to paycheck. You got a rainy day fund. You got a 401k. You got a good car. I'm not talking about a, a, a car from the 1990s. I'm talking about you got a good car. Okay. You got a good car. You got a good job. You got it going on. You know, you know, you're fine. You know, you got a couple, you know, things in the bank where if you want to take a lady on a date, you ain't got to be looking at her like, you expect me to pay for all this? Well, let's just go get ice cream. Well, let's go to the park. Well, let's just meet up for coffee. I mean, that's all good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But a real man is looking for a wife. He not getting ready to just take you out to the park. To the park and do what? Shoot, people get killed out in the park. I can't run from you in no park. I don't know nobody that's in no park. In the park. Whew. The point is, a man, and you really need to hear it from a man. You know, you need to already be about your business. You know, it's nobody's fault that you ended up with a criminal background and you didn't apply yourself because there's plenty of men that have a criminal background they made the right connections and they don't live in their past no more they are blessed highly favored favored very successful rich some of them famous and everything it's like opportunity is there okay but you have to come out from where you are but that's a whole nother story because it's not it's easier said than done i'm not gonna lie i mean you know it, it can be easier said than done but the thing is we all have the opportunity to make the right connections connections bring us into information brings us into opportunity brings us into places that you know, we would never get to if we had not made what? The connection. Because we can't be a, a one-man island. We just, we, it's just, you know, me, 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 my, and I. What is it called? Me, myself, and I. No. We need each other. We need other people. People that got information. People that got, you know, ways and opportunities that they know about. Information, you know. That's a whole nother thing. But... You know, why Why are you mad? Because this is another thing that came out. Um, they're saying that independent women don't really want a man around or whatever. Can't, you know, partner with a man, a black man, they're saying. That's not true. But what makes, okay, like I'm saying, I'm saying, okay, Man, it's so many people out here. They're using COVID as an excuse. But if your stuff was on point before COVID, 
you're not you you might have to you know have some lean days and not do everything you desire to do but even since march some things some doors have opened up so i don't know i just don't know all i know is you've been like this all your life like you didn't just now become you didn't just now be living with no furniture or just now like you know not i'm not saying there are some cases but i'm saying okay if you had a good job you know and you were a good steward okay i'm talking as a man as a grown woman a grown man there are some things that you would be able to manage through is what i'm saying and when the rubber hits the road you would become creative enough so that you can stay afloat and so that you can grow even in the midst of covid i'm telling you what i know okay i'm not gonna go into my business but i'm saying so you broke busted disgusted you know you don't have it together what what makes you think it's okay for you to be expecting so much from a woman? And what makes you think that, quote unquote, you're calling us independent women. What makes you think that if I got a job and you don't have a job, that I'm really going to want to get with you? Like, don't you think that your passion and priority should be getting a job or starting a business? Or creating some type of income for yourself. I mean, if I got a place, I got a crib, you don't have no crib. So what makes you think that it's okay for you to expect that I would want to get with you? You don't have no crib. So, I don't think so. So, I don't know. I think we expect a lot out of people. Uh, we expect too much out of people, things that they cannot do, things that they are not capable of doing. That's a real big problem. And I think that we choose the wrong people for the and for the wrong reasons. And sometimes we choose the right person for the wrong reasons. Okay? We're not supposed to be choosing people because of what they can do for us. That's just wrong. You know, you know, we should be choosing people that we can uh, build together, that we can partner with together. But we both bring in the same or more to the table. OK, a man should always be leader. A man, you know, a lioness, a woman, a queen. She going to always be resourceful and be capable, but she's supposed to help you. She's not supposed to be the help. All right. It's not supposed to be taking on special projects, for charity cases to do all the work. All right. And again, if a person is not pleasing you and they're not there for you and they're not doing the things you need or want them to do, don't get mad at them. Just bow out gracefully and just realize it, you know, it is what it is. And maybe you need to step back and have more value for yourself. OK, if you don't love yourself and you don't value yourself, nobody else is going to do that for you. Nobody's going to do it better than you. OK, so, you know, hey, I did stir up some trouble in a little, you know, conversation about the story. I mean, you know, you know, just bow out. You know, that's the truth of the matter. Like, why, why get mad and threaten them, throw their clothes out? No, I mean, just. Change your locks, change your phone, block them. Just, just move on. Just tell them, you know, right now you just need to be without them. Hey, thank them. Tell them, you know, you appreciate them, but you know, you got some soul seeking. You got some things you need to do for yourself. All right, and that's loving you, and that's putting value on you. And that's not living beneath your privileges and not being mad because you're expecting somebody else to help you do that. No, you create your happiness. You create your value. You create the love for yourself. You create the, the, um, the scenario where you're living 
uh, you're not living beneath your privileges. Okay, you're in control of that, not anyone else. And anytime you're thinking that it's because of someone else that you're not getting the love, you're not getting the care, you're not getting the happiness, you're, you're not getting the value, then you know what? Now it's time for you to start looking in yourself. Because you got to do all that for yourself before anybody else. They, that's not somebody else's responsibility. They're supposed to just, you know, put a little cream on top. I mean, that's you bake that cake. They put a little cream on it. They might put a little sprinkles on it. But it's you, your value, your self-worth, your self-love, your self-awareness. Not somebody else's, okay? So, you know, I feel bad for the guy, you know. Um, you know, they maybe through some counseling, they can work it out. I don't know, but... Hey, I'm just, in my life, everything is going to be at peace and in agreement, all right? How can we walk together except we agree? So, I love y'all, and let me tell you, life is good. God is good, all right? Love yourself. Let's keep it real so we can heal. This is V. Michelle. Let's talk about it every Friday night, 7 o'clock, right here. Um... I'm signing on off early right now. I'm about to go in here and make some money. I got a job to do. So, and it's a legal job. Don't be thinking nothing crazy. Because <laughs> I love the Lord. I ain't playing around. I don't do nothing illegal. I don't do nothing that's shysty. All right? And I love me. So, anyway, y'all have a good night. You can inbox me. You can write me at vmichelle.com. Um, you know, go over to my YouTube page, look for V space Michelle, M-A-S-H-E-L-L. And, um, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel and, you know, keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Let's talk about it. All right. Let's just keep it real so we can heal out here, you know, heal our relationships, heal our land. It's just time for better. All right. So peace out. Have a good one.